Out in Schools grew out of um, the uh, Vancouver Queer Film Festival, which is produced by Out on Screen, uh, essentially because uh, we have always tried to provide uh, youth content and a youth focus at our festival, uh, but found that we were having a hard time um, get, getting those audiences. So we decided to bring some age-appropriate film out to the high schools, uh, in essence to introduce film and GLBT education um, to students. Very quickly, uh, that was in 2004, and very quickly uh, we realized that in fact um, what we were doing in the high schools was much more important and much more effective than actually attracting um, a youth audience to our, to our annual film festival. When we arrive at the school, uh, we'll set up shop and, and um, we use a, a laptop, a PowerPoint presentation to screen our films and to provide information to the students. And uh, we like to present information like a bit of a queer 101, um, a, a bit of a timeline in Canada, a brief history of some important dates. We're really lucky here. Canada has um, ha provided more legal rights for gay and lesbian people than m many other countries in the world. And of course, we all know about gay marriage that was legalized in 2005 federally. Um, it was earlier than that in British Columbia. But I really want to show you the first uh, date, which is 1969. Pierre Trudeau, who was the Prime Minister at the time, was really famous for this quote that says, there's no place in the state, there's no place for the state in the bedrooms of Canada. Does anyone know what that means? Is it pretty obvious? Yeah? That that state should interfere with people's personal lives. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. The state shouldn't interfere with people's personal lives. Hopefully we'll leave uh, with, um, with, with students wanting to take part in some of our filmmaking initiatives, whether that be our boot camp that we uh, teach them the basic skills to create their first digital film, or to put together a public service announcement for our competition. You know, one kid told me today that he sat on a school's workshop and realized that he wasn't the only gay person in his school and probably not the only gay person on the planet. Um, he told me that he, he started Wikipediaing information and was able to find other resources and that was really cool. It's such a good program because media is what affects youth and teenagers and high school students. So I just think it's the best program for this. This generation is so filled with technology and images and part of what creates uh, stereotypes is those images that we see every day. So using the same medium to counteract those images is great and it's a lot more intriguing than listening to someone going mwah, 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 mwah. If you're watching it, you can kind of, I don't know, interact with it more. We're drawn into technology, which is good and bad all at the same time. So rather than having the person speak, um, it draws people's attention a lot quicker. Because I know for myself, when I'm at any place and the person's just talking, you know, probably within two minutes, I'm like today dreaming. So it keeps people actively listening. Film and media is definitely valuable because Everyone's spending so much time on computers and in front of the television and radio and it's just surrounding us. It's just become such a big part of our culture that that's really a good way of getting knowledge out. Um, how many of you have heard somebody say, call something gay in the last, say, month, like that's so gay or something? Yeah, I heard it this morning on the bus, actually, on my way in. So that's name calling, right? When you're saying something that's okay, oh, let's say, oh, man, that math class was so gay. Um, you're not calling the math class a lesbian, are you? What are you saying? It's dumb, it's stupid, anything else? Useless. What is that one? Useless? Yeah, it, yeah useless, dumb, stupid, etc. Yeah, exactly. So really, you, you may not be meaning to insult someone because they're gay or lesbian, but you've changed the meaning of the word and you're using it to say that something's lame, stupid, dumb, or useless. A couple of years ago, we actually did a count where people went around with a clicker and every time they heard a homophobic slur, like that's so gay or you're such a fag, they would click. And 
the general statistic was 30 to 50 times a day. Some people got up to 80 times a day. Yeah, that's okay is like the new F word, if you think about it. Because I tend to swear and I say the F word a lot, but I try not to because <laughs> it's not proper, it's not nice. But uh, in school, that they say that, oh, you're gay, you're gay, blah, 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 blah. And if you're hearing part of your core of your identity be used for something like that, you can internalize those message messages and be thinking, oh, I suck, I'm so bad. And that can really drag a person down. Just that language that they were using was so, I was so fearful because it's like, I don't think I'll be able to come out because of the way they talk. I hated being made fun of, I hated being taunted, I hated being pushed around, I hated being beaten. And it was just so tough, you know, to just be yourself in a space where you should just be learning. And all of a sudden learning took the back burner to getting picked on every day. And I hated it. If I remember correctly, he used to get shoved into lockers, um, thrown downstairs, like pushed downstairs, name called. And that could have happened to anyone. I, I think about, um, why am I getting emotional? <laughs> this is weird, but I think about um, how other kids before me got it bad, where it was not um, right to be who we are today. It was not allowed. Just your subconscious is saying, well, all these things, if everyone's saying it, it must be true. Like, there's got to be something wrong with me. I'm the problem. And it's really difficult because so many people say that's so gay and homophobic slurs just because it's a habit they don't even realize what they're saying can hurt someone and it may be that that person has just heard it for the hundredth time that day and it happens to be the thing that makes them think, okay, I'm, there's no point in me being here anymore. I would never forget the face of the police officer who told me that they found the body of Hamid from Fraser River. Uh, dear mom and dad, first thing is I love you mom and dad, but you didn't understand why I had to commit suicide. There was so much going on and I tried to cope with it, but I couldn't take it anymore. School is the main reason. It was horrible. Every day I was teased and teased. Everyone calling me gay, fake, queer, and I would always act like it didn't bug me and ignore them. But I was crying inside. It hurt me so bad because I wasn't gay. And they kept on saying I was. And I would pray to God every night for everyone to stop saying that. Make people stop name calling and teasing other people because it really hurts. That's just my only wish and I hope people will listen to me. Please visit my grave often so I'm not lonely. We've won the loss we need to, to make a difference, but the next step is learning over hearts and minds. We need to start educating, and we need to start educating not just diversity, but educating respect. We need to start having conversations about queerness in our schools, as opposed to just glossing it over, because in the absence of that education, we're learning hate.